Today, I'm in the home garden. Do you have an outdoor shower? Have I shown you this before? So on a really warm day, you can come out and cool yourself down. It was originally because there was a jacuzzi here. So when you got out of the uh, jacuzzi, you could just wash yourself off. But the one thing I'm going to do today is this. On the side of the house here, we have this climber. But the problem is, it's blocking the security lights there. So in the night, it's like a disco. So I'm going to cut some of it back to expose the security light. quite sure what this plant is so if you know what it is tell me in the comments below but it's all over the place it may be like a Russian vine or something So I'm upstairs now on the veranda and it's all the way up here as well. Up here though it's a bit easier to get. So as as you don't lean over too much. But it's a bit like ivy, it just clings to the wall. Just noticed this on our brick wall. Look at that, it's like a cotoniaster, I think. But it's seeded itself in the wall and it can stay there. The wall is damaged anyway, it's going to have to be replaced at some point. But look how nature just finds a spot. Well, the wind is starting to pick up now, so I've stopped, but that's as far as I've got, and I'm quite happy with that. Recently, I was on a Facebook page, and somebody put a post there, and she mentioned the house that she used to live in for 25 years, and it turns out that I live in that house now. So I sent her an email and asked if she had any old pictures. So she sent me a few, and it was strange to see the place from 25, 30 years ago. And she told me some interesting things. That on Coronation Day, in order to mark Coronation, they planted a small beech tree, a copper beech tree. And she asked, was it still in the garden? So I did a Skype call with her and I did a tour of the garden. And this copper beech we can now pinpoint exactly to the day that it was planted. 
something else that she asked. She said, is the wooded area still there? Which I said, yes. And she said, if you go down the path, on the left-hand side, there is a well. And that she remembers her father put in a slab stone on top in order to cap it. So as far as we are aware, in this area somewhere, there is a well. And I'm imagining this section. So who knows? I might try and get somebody with some dowsing rods to come and see if they can find it. Because I don't particularly want to start digging aimlessly. But it would be exciting to actually dig and find something. She said they used to bring water up from the underground stream. And back in the uh, heat waves that we've had in the past, we have found that the entire garden turns brown, except for a very long path that goes down the side of the garden. So down here, all that turns brown. And that little section in there, that stays green. No, I've got that wrong, haven't I? So everything turns brown, except for this section here, which stays green. And you can still see the outline of the path, and the bit down there stays green as well. She also remembers these trees at the bottom here, which are still giving us apples and pears. And while I was taking her around the garden, like I'm doing with you now, we stumbled upon the old gates to the house, which she remembers. So there they are. She was also telling me some stories about the fact that the house was bombed during the Second World War, which I knew the back of the house blew off and they had to rebuild it. But they contacted the local authority and her father wanted to build a bungalow. But the council turned his application down because after the war there was a shortage of, of housing and they said to him they would only give him planning permission if he built a two-story house and that the upstairs was rented to a family. Which is very interesting because outside in the lane there's a plot of land and they want to build a two-story house but all the neighbours want them to build a bungalow so it's sort of the reversal seems to be a good crop of apples this year and that old test to find out if your apples are ready for picking is you just take the apple give it a twist if it stays on the tree it's not ready so it's just strange to speak to somebody who can relive memories and it's great to see pictures of things of how places have changed because if you think outside the house in the park there is this oak tree and I've often thought about what has that oak tree seen during its lifetime because I don't know how old that tree would be take a guess in the comments below but this is the boundary line between my borough and the borough next door and we were reading some old books the other day and they said that this oak tree is the boundary tree and that a few yards down the road which is now where the shops are that is where there was a toll bridge and if you wanted to go into the next district you had to pay a toll so that tree there would have seen this area covered in fields, maybe cattle out on the fields. Because this, these houses are still fairly new and I found a picture the other day on eBay of when the nearby street was built. And again, it's just fascinating to look back. In order to mark the millennium, a lot of my friends were saying, what should we do? Some jumped out of planes, some climbed up mountains. And I said I would write a book about the last hundred years of the area that I lived in Wales. 
Well, fast forward about five years and I ended up writing three books for a company called Tempest Publishing, which later became known as The History Press, based, well, at the time they were based in Stroud, Gloucestershire. I don't know if they're still there. And that book was recording memories that the locals told me. And I tried to find people of a certain age. And there was one story where she remembers when electric light came to the valleys. And there's another story where she said, we went down to the local shop because there was great excitement. There was a new, uh, well, well, they didn't know whether it was fruit or a vegetable, but there was this new red thing in the local shop. And she went in and she said to the woman behind the counter, excuse me, could you tell me what is that in the window? And she said, well, I don't know whether it's fruit or vegetable, but it is something called a tomato. But they were half a pound, a cr uh, half a pound for a crown. So somebody who remembers the first tomatoes going into Wales and they didn't know how to eat them or and I've got other stories in the book about how somebody was born at the start of the war and they'd never seen a banana. So when the bananas came back during uh, towards the end of the war, they didn't know that you had to take the skin off. And he said, I started to eat the banana and I didn't think it was too much of a, uh, a fuss because everybody was going, you know, bananas down in the co-op, let's go down and get some. It's just fascinating how things, and obviously I spoke to people who had never uh, had a TV and they used to just sit around and make their own entertainment. They used to get the the uh, the guitar out and have a few sing songs. And a district nurse called Lucy, she's another story that's in my book, and she said that she saw a marked difference when TV came in she said you could you could go up and down the valley and because she was the district nurse the midwife every door was open to her she could go into any house in the street and there'd be a warm welcome and a cup of tea for her but she said when tv came in you would go in the house and people would go Shh. and you'd just sit there and watch the tv and she said she noticed that the art of conversation died abruptly as soon as TVs started to flood into the valleys. So it's just fascinating when I look at oak trees like that and I think what has that tree seen and what will the tree see in the next hundred, two hundred years? Anyway, I can't sit here chewing the fat with you. I've got to clean up all this debris. I'll probably bring it down and put it on the compost bin. So, thanks for joining me. Next time, I'm going to try and get into central London and see what it's like in there. There's a few places that I want to uh, visit, um, but I'm doing it the, the proper way and I'm getting advanced permission to go and film there. So I have to fall in with their uh, time scales and everything so hopefully there'll be a few interesting videos coming up of life in London so from me until then on a very windy uh, Saturday bye for now <laughs>